we're all set to geek out on Weather for Weather Geeks on this uh, Monday evening. We're kicking off a new work week on a very busy note. we got a lot to talk about this week. Cold, some snow, the northern lights, potential winter storm for the upcoming weekend, and much, much more. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right to it. You know, the number of snow squall warnings issued by our local National Weather Service offices over the last few days, uh, too many to count between Saturday and today. We had a whole slew of snow squall warning Saturday afternoon. We did that late morning uh, today. This is one of those squalls that uh, came through the Niles area, time-lapse styled here during the uh, 9 o'clock hour. Whoosh, all of a sudden the ground is covered, the visibility is reduced, and then it moves on and everything's just fine. Uh, uh, official accumulations at the airport today, 1.1 inches, I believe. Um, in fact, there it is, 1.1, uh, the number at the airport. 6.3 is where we stand for the month. Now that is below average for January. But for the season as a whole, we're running just a little bit above the average in terms of our uh, snowfall at the Youngstown Warren Airport by an inch and a half. It's pretty close to average. We've had a pretty typical snow season thus far, and we're probably going to add some to these numbers Wednesday into Wednesday night, and then, uh, you know, we'll be keeping a close eye on the upcoming weekend. More about that coming up later in the video. In the meantime, we do have a clear sky in much of the region tonight and a very strong geomagnetic storm is ongoing and so the northern lights can be seen I think in a lot of places across the US tonight uh, depending on cloud cover of course and maybe even in some pretty far south latitudes some northern lights uh, could be could be viewed now uh, you know keep your expectations in check whenever it comes to checking things out in the nighttime sky whether it's a meteor shower or the northern lights or anything else these things tend to be a little bit fickle and you know you got to keep your expectations in check but if you can stomach the cold uh, bundle up, head outside, and maybe uh, you'll get lucky. And, you know, our experience with the Northern Lights over the last few years is even with a, a camera phone, uh, uh, you have a better chance of seeing it through your camera lens on your phone than you do with the naked eye a lot of times. And long exposure photography, um, which a lot of our camera phones can do these days, um, that tends to work best. You want to give your eyes time to adjust. Be patient. Um, and of course, these are the northern lights. I get a lot of questions, which direction do I look? It's the northern lights, so your best bet is to, of course, look off to the north and find a clear view of the horizon and away from trees and light pollution and that sort of thing. So I mentioned the sky has cleared pretty nicely. Um, the clouds that we had earlier on have thinned out. There can be a partly cloudy sky at times, but a lot of the uh, times, I should say, but a lot of the night tonight will be mainly clear, allowing uh, for not only possibly good viewing of the northern lights, but cold temperatures as well. We have an arctic air mass pushing in, we have snow on the ground, some of it's fresh snow, uh, we have that clear sky, and if the wind were to be completely calm tonight, it would be even colder, but it's probably not going to go completely calm officially tonight. Just enough of a breeze tonight to keep the temperature from completely bottoming out, but it's going to be cold enough especially when you factor in the wind chill that uh, cold weather advisories are out for just about all of Ohio and just about all of Pennsylvania as well. Current temperatures here in the 7 o'clock hour, single digits already the rule across the area. 6, 7, 8, 9 degrees here in the early evening hours. We'll probably bottom out around 0, 1, 2 above overnight tonight. The wind chill, though, will be a factor. You don't need much of a breeze when it's this cold outside to create a wind chill that is as low as 10 below, 12 below, 15 below. Most area schools have already canceled for the day on Tuesday in anticipation of these wind chill numbers. As far as the weather Tuesday, aside from the cold, it's going to be a decent looking day. Grab the sunglasses as you head out the door Tuesday morning. We'll call it partly to mostly sunny on Tuesday, but the sunshine, of course, pretty ineffective. The sun, of course, is pretty weak now. We're still just a month out from the solstice. The sun angle is about the same as just before Thanksgiving in mid to late November. In other words, pretty weak. Sun angle season around here, I don't typically think of the sun having much of a an influence on our weather in terms of the strength of the sun, the angle of the, of the sun's rays, until we get into mid-February around Valentine's Day. Until then, the sun is, is generally pretty weak, so it's not much of a much of a help at this time of the year, that is for sure. Now we have another round of snow showers heading our way Wednesday. And while during the daylight hours, I think these will be pretty garden variety, come and go snow showers. There might even be a raindrop or two as we might sneak above freezing for a few hours on Wednesday. Wednesday evening, I could see with the approach of the next front where we might uh, have a heavier snow shower, maybe a snow squall. Back things up to right here. I could see we're seven, eight, nine o'clock Wednesday evening. We have a beefier snow squall in a couple of spots. Um, and then we'll be kind of uh, waiting for the next front on Thursday. It comes through late in the day Thursday, and temperatures will start plummeting Thursday night, and they'll just keep on falling throughout the course of Friday. I think it'll be even colder Friday into Friday night into Saturday morning, and probably during the day Saturday, than the air mass that we have 
right now. All right, let's talk about our weekend uh, winter storm potential. I think there is going to be a winter storm in the eastern U.S. It's just a matter of where is it going to be. I think it's looking more and more likely this is going to be a pretty big event for a place like Nashville, for a place like maybe Raleigh, um, a lot of Virginia, a lot of southern West Virginia, a lot of Kentucky, maybe even as far south as northern Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. It could be a close shave in Atlanta. Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina may get in on this. In some of these southern locations, it may not be just snow. It may be ice concerns. Now, for us, right now, the current modeling would suggest that this is a close shave. The odds would most favor a miss or, you know, just a grazing for us. But it's only Monday. We've got a lot of time to figure this out. Um, the timing on this for us, this will be mostly Saturday night, maybe into parts of Sunday. And, you know, at this, at this range, when we're five or six days out, we rely on a lot of what we call ensemble modeling. We look at our high-resolution main computer models, the main version of the European model, the main version of the GFS, all that stuff. But when you're this far out, you rely on ensemble modeling as well to kind of smooth out the potential errors in the modeling. And one of the products we can look at is, this is off the European ensemble modeling, the odds of more than an inch worth of snow, just an inch, odds of more than an inch for this upcoming winter storm. And the uh, current uh, modeling, the Europeans, suggests that the strongest odds of an inch or more would be down into Kentucky, West Virginia, North Carolina, Virginia. And, you know, the odds only get up to maybe 30 or 40 percent, uh, maybe as far north as East Liverpool, and then north of that, they're even lower. That's the European, kind of the main version. But in this day and age, of course, everything's about artificial intelligence these days, right? And that, you know, weather modeling is no exception. We have access now to some pretty nice artificial intelligence versions of our favorite weather modeling. And, you know, I've been studying how these things have been doing. And like any modeling, it has its good days and its bad. But overall, I've been pretty impressed with both the AI version of the European model. We have an AI version of the GFS now as well, as, as well as uh, kind of high resolution, more shor short term um, artificial intelligence modeling. This is the AI version of the European same product, odds of an inch or more worth of snow. Notice how everything's a little farther to the north. The main version of the of the European is pretty suppressed. In other words, it has a, a high pressure system off to our north that is so strong, it's going to just press this storm to the south and keep the storm track mostly to our south. The AI version of the European does not have the high as strong and it would allow the moisture to come a little bit farther to the north. So, you know, I could spend 20 minutes showing you a lot of the modeling I've looked at today for the weekend. This is just an example. There are two basic camps right now. The ones that have the stronger high keep the storm track suppressed to the south. The ones who don't have as strong of a high pressure system in the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes allow the moisture to come a little bit farther to the north. So taken verbatim, the AI version of the European would say the odds are pretty good of seeing at least an inch. Uh, as far north as probably East Liverpool and maybe even as far north as Route 224. And it's a, it's a lock on this set of modeling that this would be a one inch or more snow event, not far to our south, Morgantown, down into Beckley, West Virginia, and across towards DC and Dover, Delaware, and places like that. So, you know, it's only Monday. We've got our work cut out for us, that is for sure. But these are some of the things that we look at at this range when we're five or six days out from a potential winter storm. One thing for sure, snow or not, it's going to be really cold later this week. If you think it's cold now, the next air mass that comes down Friday into Friday night into the weekend will be even colder. These are the actual air temperatures we have projected for the next several nights. I think Friday night will be the coldest of the bunch with the actual air temperature dropping below zero. Uh, the wind chill will be probably in the teens below zero. Uh, and this cold has some staying power. I think... You know, we're going to flirt with freezing for a couple of days this week, but beyond that, yikes. Um, from the 23rd, probably right through the end of the month, uh, we're very close to the end of the month. We're going to have our time getting out of the teens for daytime highs. I, I'm pretty impressed with the way this looks through about the 29th or 30th. Beyond that, beyond this 10-day period, um, the modeling has trended a little bit colder for the very start of February as well. I was optimistic for a while last week that the first few days of February would feature a moderating trend, and that moderating trend may still happen in early February. It may just be beyond, be beyond the first few days of the month. So we have a lot of cold to talk about here on Weather for Weather Geeks and on all my social media outlets. Uh, this will be the place to be as we uh, gear up for late this week and the weekend. We're talking about some serious cold, and we're talking about the uh, storm potential as well. Rely on me, rely on our team here at 21 News for the uh, latest no-hype weather uh, pro uh, pro prognostications. 
easy for me to say, um, when it comes to uh, the upcoming weekend and much, much more. So hope to see you back here on Tuesday. Have a great rest of your night, and thank you as always for watching.